Today, I'm gonna to tell you about my experience over the past two weeks with the Sigma 150 millimeter to 600 millimeter F5 to 6.3 HSM sport lens for Canon EF. This is an awesome lens and I've been able to use it in a bunch of different scenarios like sports and wildlife. I'm super excited to tell you about this, but before we do so, I wanna tell you about our sponsor, Artlist. If you're creative like myself on YouTube or even have a large production company, you're going to need stock assets such as music, sound effects, and footage. And Artlist is the best place to get that. With different plans stemming from just music to Artlist Max with everything you need, Artlist is the place to go. If you wanna get two months for free on your annual subscription, check out the link below. Thank you to Artlist for supporting the channel and back to the video. First off, let's talk about what this lens comes with. It comes with this awesome lens cover for the hood. It actually is so big that you can't really get a lens cap for it. So we can pull this off here. It also comes with an awesome lens hood. It's metal, so you have to unscrew it like, there we go, and flip it around. Now before I put this on, there's actually a 105 millimeter filter thread on the front. So you can get ND filters and polarizers for this lens, but they're gonna be very expensive. So let's put this lens hood on right there. It also comes with this matching carrying case, which is really nice. If you have any other Sigma lenses, it's basically the same case, except bigger and with an extra pad on it because this lens is quite heavy. It also comes with a strap for the lens itself. Instead of using a camera strap, you're gonna wanna use it on this lens because it's quite a heavy lens, around six pounds. Let's put the accessories away for now. This lens does have pretty much every feature you're gonna want in a lens. It has a locking switch right there, so when you zoom it out, you can lock it at different positions. This is an external zoom lens, so it does get bigger as you zoom it in and out, which is fine and pretty common for lenses of this zoom range. Now, as I said earlier, it's 150 millimeters to 600 millimeters. I do wish the throw was a little bit less because you kind of have to just keep twisting it, but I found if you hold it like this and do it just push and pull, it works pretty well. It's a huge range though, so I guess that's fine. It does have a rotating tripod collar like this, and it actually clicks at every 90 degrees. So if you're shooting landscape and then you want to rotate to portrait, you can do that and just lock in at the clicks. Super nice feature, and I wish more lenses had that. As far as I know, almost every Sigma zoom lens has it, so if you have other Sigma zooms, it's the same thing. And that's pretty much the story about everything else on this lens, is if you have any other Sigma lenses like the 70 to 200, it's the same. So I've got controls for autofocus, manual override and manual focus. I've got the different settings for focus limiting. And this is really important. If you set the focus range to full, it's really slow and tends to get stuck. So I would pay attention to how far away the subject is and switch that accordingly. It really speeds up the focus. There's three different stabilization modes. So off, one, and two. And you can actually customize these settings if you get the extra USB docking bay. That also goes with the custom settings. So if you're doing sports photography and you wanna have it a certain way and then a different way for wildlife, you could program that in if you get the dock. So that's pretty much everything physical about this lens. Other than the little focus gauge right here, which all the Sigma lenses have, this is super nice because it tells you what your focus plane is at in feet and meters. Really handy and I love having that. So let's move on to usability and optics. As I said earlier, it is a very heavy lens, around six pounds, and you aren't really gonna notice what body you put on it because the lens is almost all the weight. Now, it is an EF mount, so if you're wanting to use some of the newer cameras, for example, maybe an R7, you're gonna need to get an adapter, just like this guy right here. If you put the adapter on the camera with the lens, it works perfectly fine, and I have haven't had any issues with the focus being slightly off unless it's pretty dark. Now, again, you can customize how the focus responds if you get that USB docking bit. It's something to consider getting if you have a bunch of Sigma lenses and you wanna really customize what they can do. Now, again, with the weight, you can use this lens handheld, but if you're gonna be out for a long time at a shoot, I'll probably recommend going with a tripod or monopod just because of the weight. Let's move on to optics. This is a sport lens, so it has all the awesome features that all the sports lenses have. And as far as sharpness and focus speed and everything, it's been amazing. For the price, you're really not gonna find anything better than this. However, there's one thing that I wish this lens had, and that was a brighter aperture. See, it's f5 to 6.3 at the longest end, and that's not quite bright enough for anything after sunset, like at a football field or something like that. All the photos tend to be pretty noisy, so that's something to consider too. If you're doing a lot of sports photography, like that's your job, you're probably gonna wanna get an f2, h, something like that, or an F4. You can't really get a 600 F2.8, but you can get a 600 F4. Those lenses are going to be far brighter and sharper, but they're also going to be extremely expensive, upwards of $10,000. So it's basically the prosumer's zoom lens. It's not crazy expensive, it's not crazy big, but it still has that awesome zoom range that you want from those really expensive lenses. And it has a much bigger range. See, if you got a 600 F4, it's just 600. That's a lot of zoom, but you can't zoom it in and out 
like you can with this gun. So if you pair this with maybe a 70 to 200 F2.8 and maybe a 24 to 70, you're gonna be in a really good situation for sports. You got that wide, you got that mid zoom that is bright, and then you got that crazy zoom for when you wanna get really in the action and you don't want to have to be on the field. If you wanna get a teleconverter for this lens, you could do that. But remember, if you add a teleconverter, it will be 1200 millimeters, but it will also be half as bright. So like F12, that's not gonna be very good. As far as camera recommendations go for this lens, I've loved using the R7 with this. Because it has an APS-C sensor, it's 1.6 times 600, which works out to be around 940 millimeters, which is insane. And it's 35 megapixels. So if it's bright enough, you can crop into that photo and it'll still look awesome. If you want to go full frame and get those low light advantages, I also have used the R8 with this lens and it is awesome as well. If you're a wildlife photographer and you have the lights, the 7 is definitely the way to go. So that's pretty much it for this lens. Now it comes with pretty much everything you need and it's going to be a lot cheaper than some of the other lenses, coming in around 1500 to $2,000 depending on when you pick it up. For the price, it really is one of the best zooms you can get for a Canon system. If you want to pick up this lens for yourself and support the channel at the same time, check out the Amazon affiliate links below. It really helps out the channel. But before we go, I want to tell you about our sponsor. With different plans stemming from just music to Artlist Max with everything you need, Artlist is the place to go. If you want to get two months for free on your annual subscription, check out the link below. Thank you to Artlist for supporting the channel and congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. If you want to watch another video, there's one right over here and two below me. And let us know in the comment section down below what videos we should make next.